Not so slim shady. What's up, dude? I haven't seen you since high school. Hey, titty twister. Stop, stop. Oh. You're good at this, huh? Yeah. Test results, gentlemen. Such a bull. You're really good at this. Yeah. Hey, you want to be friends? Yeah, I did. Hello, welcome to What the Flick. It's 1987 all over again. I have big teased up bangs and frosted lipstick. It's very exciting. Um, we're talking about 21 Jump Street here. I'm Christy, this is Matt, this is Alonzo, the lovely Gray down at the end. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh -huh. um, 21 Jump Street, a movie that didn't really need to be made, right? It was the world no clamoring for a film version no, of this? No, but boy, are we glad they made it. We yes. are glad. Please describe it to yeah, us. So, yeah, basically, it's, it's the remake that nobody wanted. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, 21 Jump Street was on the, uh, the old the Fox network when it was just getting started, and it's mainly remembered now as the show that made Johnny Depp famous in the first place. But uh, the premise was that uh, young cops would go undercover into high schools and bust drug rings or whatever. And so uh, Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum play two former high school uh, enemies who become pals at the Metropolitan City Police Academy. <laughs> and after screwing up a drug bust, uh, they get assigned to Jump Street and sent back to high school, and complications ensue. We're reviving a canceled undercover program from the 80s. What do we report to? Down on Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. You are here because you some Justin Bieber, Miley Cyrus looking mugs. You will be going in as undercover high school students. You have exceptional muscle tone there, young man. When'd you go through puberty? Like it's seven or something? There's a new synthetic drug at Sagan High. The mission is find a supplier. I think the dealers are the popular kids. We still party. That would be the quickest way to get in with them. Come on, let's go. Take it here so I know you're cool. Have fun. Are you guys on drugs? A lot of things that made me wonder about you. Your taste in music. The fact that you look like a 40-year-old man. Let me check out your chest. Check out your test. Okay, now did you guys actually watch the TV show when it was out in the 80s? I did. Did you? Okay. I barely no. remember it. Yeah, I didn't really watch it. But it I didn't, it didn't stay in the memory though. Like I know I watched it. No, because compared to my own advice, it was boring. I didn't understand how hot cops were yet. Right, you hadn't gone to Chippendales. <laughs> Hot cops. You hadn't been to a bachelorette party. Right. Basically, yeah. No, um, but yeah, I never really watched the show, but I don't think you need to have seen the show no. at all no. to have no, no, fun no, 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 here. No, no, no. no, no. And, and, the, and the movie pretty much acknowledges that making a movie of 21 Jump Street is a stupid thing. Uh -huh. Which is like, precisely what got me into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Very shrewdly, they're, they, they're ahead of you and saying, right. yes, we know this right. There doesn't need this movie doesn't need to exist, but we're just going to do it anyway. And and it, it's actually, it, it, it's kind of, almost subversive because Hollywood wants to make these movies of familiar properties, of titles we already know, or plots we already know, and they've basically stuck this title onto something that is completely its own thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it has a premise of the cops going undercover in high school. That's yeah. the only thing and that's, that's it. exactly right. Although, right. you know, that happens in real life now. Does right? it? <laughs> yes, it does, actually. There was that How do you know this? Uh, there was, because I'm one of them. <laughs> Clearly, I can pass for high school. You're not a narc at all. Teenagers no. use the internet. You're Only outed. narcs use the word narc. <laughs> uh, uh, no, there's a story. there was a story about the kid that got nailed for selling pot that some undercover cop who was, you know, kind of almost acting like his girlfriend had got him. It's this whole story that's... Oh, I did hear right? about that. Yes, yes, yes. And and it was, was it entrapment? Was it yeah, entrapment? Right, but that, that yeah, actually yeah. does happen in okay. real life. So it's conceivable that you could do a story like this and not call it 21 Jump Street. But, you know, as we talked about, the line that's in there where they don't just make a reference to the idea of remaking old ideas. Like, they make a really sharp joke right. about how stupid and how shitty and how unoriginal <laughs> right. it is yes. right. to do something and like this. And then they move on. And then they move on. Right, right, right. And, yeah, and, and you're going to say something. Well, ahead. that's what I like about the entire film, is that every single point that you don't believe as a even sort of sophisticated moviegoer, it, they totally acknowledge and they rip right. themselves up for. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill do not look young in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> right. They're definitely at least 10 years older than anyone else in the film. Right. And that's what's funny. The whole movie's funny like right. that. Right. And you know, or in one of the chase scenes, there's a running joke about things not exploding that <laughs> right. you expect yes. to explode. <laughs> That, Everything's like that's, funny. That, that, but, what, but they're not obnoxious about the cute knowingness of it all. Right. Yeah, no, no, they, they don't do wink you to death. On. But yeah. I have to tell you, the thing that really impressed me with this movie is over and above all of that kind of, you know, wink and a nod about action movies and remakes, is there's actually kind of a real story here. Right. It actually is a much more involving story than a remake of 21 Jump Street has any right to be. <laughs> it becomes this really, it, you know, it, I wouldn't I, say powerful, but this this surprisingly moving piece about friendship and 
you know, I think which is partly driven by the chemistry between Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum. But right. it's about friendship and about popularity and what that can do to a friendship. It, it also acknowledges, I think, that as an adult, no matter how successful or you know well balanced you are, if you had a shot of going to high school right. again and being popular, you would totally do it. Huh. You know, at least that's what this movie <laughs> implies. And, and and you know, there's a very fun setup where you know the the, the the cover they've got for Jonah Hill's character is like the science nerd, and the one they've got for Channing Tatum is the sort of dumb jock. But then they don't bother to learn their right name, so they wind up with each other's dossiers. Right. 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 And so just stuff like that. I mean, it's very, very clever. But it really kind of touches on the idea of, like, if you were a nerd in high school, or even if you were popular but kind of a dumb jock in high school, and you got a, a do-over, mm -hmm. you, you would sort of, you would revert to being 17 again like right. that. It's about you know? peaking. Exactly. Yeah. But it, and it also doesn't have to... Uh, you, also, your future is never set in stone. Mm -hmm. Basically, like your, who you are is always changing, and that's kind of what I liked. About, I was on, I wasn't expecting anything interesting to come out of this movie at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They go back. They have a different experience than they did when they were kids, and they're like, "Oh my God, I've learned something at the end." <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like and there, there was, was a car chase. Boom. Mm -hmm. A surprising amount of character growth that they don't beat you over the head with. It's no. somewhat subtle that happens for both Channing Tatum and Jonah right. Hill's character. Mm -hmm. And again, they don't make it really <laughs> obvious. They're not really just you know, spoon feeding you, it, it worked. They were true to the characters. And I was really impressed. Can I continue to sing the praises of Channing Tatum? Oh, because, yes. Because you know what, I think it's, it'd be so easy, and someone described him as like, Josh Hartnett 2.0. I can't recall who said that. Someone said it to me. But I have said all along, like from the very beginning when I first saw him, that there is way more to him than meets the eye. And there's way more to him than his prettiness might suggest. And here he shows that again because, yes, it's a comic role, but it requires the comedy to come from a serious place. And, and I, I that will say that this is the movie that's and made me turn the corner on Channing You didn't Taylor. like him? I, yeah. I, I was like, eh, you know, another Josh. Like, eh, he's just some pretty boy. You know, right. he does the dance movie. He can play a soldier, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? <laughs> you know. And now it's like, oh, you know what? This guy can actually act. I, I want to see more of it. And I remember thinking, oh, wow, he's funny. Who knew? And then I looked back and I remembered that he was funny in The Dilemma. He's really, he's the only good thing the in The only funny thing in The movie. Dilemma. Yeah. So, yeah, he's kind of snuck up on me, too. I have to say I, I am giving him more of a benefit of the doubt. Okay. Now. Anybody who is that sexy who has is willing to take the piss out of himself yeah. is A+. plus. Also, mm -hmm. we should mention, um, I really like Brie Thank Larson you. in this. <laughs> 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 that, that's been Matt Ashley's M.O. all along. Um, <laughs> I like Brie Larson a lot. I like that she's not just the girl. She's not just like the pretty, vapid um, play thing, but she's a smart ass and yeah. she's a cool shit girl and she's totally, they're equal in terms of her presence. And, um, and, and not, not to spoil any jokes, but during the big highway chase, I would say, look out for the billboards. And that's I don't remember the billboards. There's a very subtle joke, but look for them. And the directors also did Clone High and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, which are also two other things that sort of came out of nowhere and were great. I think I walked into this thinking it was going to be like that Starsky and Hutch from 2004 right. or whatever oh, yeah. it was, right, yeah. where it was just oh, like a full-on campy parody of, of a show or um, that, that Dukes of Hazard that came out. That uh, year. But, yes, but this no. is not that. This is much it's smarter and more substantive and surprisingly so. Yeah, no, it almost, it almost feel, it felt more like people saying, we have this funny idea, how can we get it made? Oh, I know, we'll call it 21 <laughs> Jump Street and then <laughs> someone will, will give us money to make it. You know, it, it almost feels like they're, they're, they're gaming the system. Uh, I suspect that we're gonna hear about a sequel for this and I, for one, endorse that idea. <laughs> I think it's gonna be great. Sure. I think it, I, I wanna see. 22 Jump Street. I was just gonna oh, say that. Yeah. Surprisingly <laughs> shrewd Speaking for, of, you know. let's do numbers. Uh, All right, great Drake, do a number. 8.9, wow. this movie was great. Okay. 8.2. Uh, eight I'm saying 7.5, and my Ooh. only my only apprehension is that there are a lot of dick jokes and a lot of uses of the word fag. Dicks are funny! Let's talk okay, about that. can we talk about that? As, as, because, as the, as the, the fag, <laughs> this, the comedy in this movie is about masculine panic. Okay. So I never felt, right. like, it, okay. I never felt like it was homophobic. I felt like it was about dudes having to one-up each other and trying to, you know, whip it out and be the biggest on the block. And that that's what those jokes were meant to be. And believe me, I'm the first to call right, homophobia. Sure, sure, sure. I was not offended by this movie. I think that the fag jokes come from a place of male inadequacy. I'm not and saying it's homophobic. I'm saying it's needless given how much better the rest of the content mm. of the film is. Like, they don't need to go to that kind of adolescent well, But But, uh, but I, I think what the comedy is is very specifically mm -hmm. about Dudes trying to prove uh -huh. themselves, dudes trying to measure and up. And that's the word they use. And that's the word they okay. use. Okay. And ahead, also, just to note, Masculine Panic is the name of the band that Matt Atchity and I were in <laughs> in 1987. <laughs> I, I caught your earliest gigs and I saw a promise from you from the very start. All right, so our math, thanks to um, 
Alonzo's freakish math skills. We happen to know that the number on this is 8.3 is our average. Huge. But it's doing even better than that, right? In the tomato uh, world? Or is it right around there? No, that? it's right around 86 right yeah. now. It dropped nice. a little bit after these last week of screenings. But 86, certified fresh. Definitely go see it. Yeah, it plays South by Southwest. Fresh. And the second I saw it here in LA, I'm like, this is going to play like freaking gangbusters in Austin. Like, that is your audience. Oh, Everyone, everyone's yeah, loving yeah, this. Yeah, so, I think it's, right. it's going to do really well this weekend. I think so too. We'll find out. All right, thanks guys. Job. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Down on Job Street. <laughs>